is just from pure source. So, and and I wanted to keep it that way. We started recording right now. There we go. We're just waiting for some more people to log on. It looks like there's a lot of people logging in. So, so anyway, if you have any questions pertaining to PTSD, guys, please just send them in, and we'll try to answer them. Again, we'll do um, we'll do about 15, 15 to twenty minutes on some of the issues. And then we'll go ahead into the meditation. Okay. Uh, yes, you can call on Skype. And there is Skype information, guys, if you didn't get that. Uh, if you go to mossagenet.com and click on this PTSD, you can uh, call through Skype. I'm just reading some of the questions here. This one's a good one. It says, not all flashbacks are visual. I have kinesthetic flashbacks. A lot of thank yous. So, just trying to trying to get things. This one is uh, Carlos from Mexico. Say a couple of people. It says suffer six traumatic events in six months, ending with my with my young daughter's death. That was 16 years ago, and I still have not really recovered. I feel that life is unkind and cannot get over a deep negativity negativity that is holding me back. I know we create our own reality. But I seem stuck. Okay, so that again is kind of like a poster child for PTSD. So we'll get started, guys. Very simple. All we need to do is uh, get comfortable in this hour. It's going to be very, perhaps, hopefully, awakening to many of us, or 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 of letting go. So I could just give you a second or two to get into that comfortable space. You don't have to stand up because you can just kick back again, relax, and then we'll get started. All right. Again, just tapping into you, tapping into the group, tapping into what PTSD is all about. Uh, I think we went over the recording, so some people might not actually get on board. Um, again, if you can, guys, listen on a computer to open up the phone lines for other people. That'd be fantastic as well, So, because we are reached our limits already. So say we'll have to work on getting more phone lines later on this year. Anyway, again, guys, welcome to PTSD. This session is not only for soldiers. It's also for people who have experienced trauma in other areas of life that, uh, you know, we just seem stuck on. A healthy way of describing PTSD is that, it, you know, it's a normal reaction to a, to an abnormal experience. Anyone who experiences trauma witnesses a tragic event, whether they are civilian or police officer or firefighter, uh, they will have some form of uh, PTSD. So, with that, uh, and again, coming coming into this PTSD, the reason why, again, you know, those brave soldiers give a lot of not just that time wherever they were in, in the wars, but then also when they come back home, a lot of issues that they come back. So that's why I'm doing this. And and again, as I've worked on some soldiers, and as as I've worked on, for example, Mina. Uh, who's produced this uh, unbelievable documentary on PTSD that you know I urge you to take a look at, and we'll give you more information on that. But as I was working on her, it was amazing at the number of spirits, um, soldiers who have passed away, who were around her, looking for a way out. Okay, and that's what again deeply prompted me to do something on that because there's a lot of soldiers out there. Obviously, Nina is one of them that has worked for a long time to to document to create this documentary, 
and the number of soldiers that were around her just like searching and wanting that space out because what has happened I guess is and we'll explain why that happens later on but uh, basically in a nutshell what happens you get into this trauma or you you pass away fighting or something and then we get stuck in a time loop and we keep recreating that trauma even when we're not connected to our bodies and uh, although they know that they're passed away they're still looking for help to go beyond uh, another way of looking at it if uh, in religious terms if you're familiar with that purgatory that's the real definition of purgatory you know it's not like you committed a sin or anything and then you're waiting to go to heaven or hell it's just this endless time frame that we get stuck in so um, again some medical info just for some individuals who are not familiar with that uh, what PTSD is important uh, the important endocrine glands involved in PTSD is a group called HPA access. Okay, so hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access. Uh, because of the f uh, fundamental interactions between these glands, interaction between the gland controls reaction to stress, regulates many body processes, including digestion, the immune system, mood and motion, sexuality, uh, energy storage, and expenditure. For those of us with PTSD, access does not function properly. So that's what's got. Uh, that's again, that's what gets kind of mixed up. So much of some of the physiological and emotional impact. Again, if you're not aware of it, if you know somebody that might be that you're not sure that's suffering from it, these are some of the symptoms that you might be looking for. Uh, moral pain, fought a, fought a war that no longer has meaning, seeing killing in combat as murder, etc. Uh, high, this is alarming. High suicide rate. According to the VA's recent study, 22 veterans per day are committing suicide, nearly one per hour. Uh, many outside the VA believe that the statistic is even higher. So again, uh, what happens, and if you've heard me before talk on people who commit suicide, again, it's really not a sin. Uh, what's quoted in you know the religious practice is that it's a sin, but Sin again in religious standards got denoted is really called being uh, off the mark. That's what the real meaning of sin is. So when you commit suicide or anything like that, similar to that, guys, uh, and that is say uh, uh, body mutilation, you know things like that. Uh, just to give you an example, what happens is that your spirit space gets distorted enough that your spirit starts to disconnect from you, although you're still living. And then when you say you commit suicide, obviously you're disconnected enough to commit suicide, and that's one of the reasons why you do. But then when you cross over, it seems like your spirit doesn't exactly know where it is, and then it gets stuck again in this time loop. So, again not a good reason to commit suicide because it doesn't really help it doesn't release you from the pains that you're feeling it just makes it go on forever and ever so remember that um, seek some help if you're um, if you're feeling that way okay and uh, I have helped people with suicide issues so uh, identity crisis as we go on. Young men who loved life and went to war and shot it to pieces. They don't know who they are anymore. Okay. Confused sexual, sexuality and inability to enjoy intimacy. Drug and alcohol uh, abuse to numb the emotional pain. Uh, depression and apathy and destructive behaviors. Shame or self-blame and survivor's guilt. Persistent flashbacks, difficulty sleeping or staying asleep and sleeping with a weapon. Hypervigilance or constant red alert, feeling jumpy, easily startled, car backfiring, you know, fireworks bring back the sounds of combat, uh, inability, irritability, outbursts of anger. Uh, very closely, I know my, uh, my wife's, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, came back from Afghanistan twice, has issues with this. So, um, fortunately, 
he doesn't want my help. Anyway, uh, societal and financial impact. In addition to physical wounds that are clearly visible, there are invisible wounds when many uh, soldiers return home from war and transition back into civilian life. You know, like feeling alienated and alone and loss of interest for life. Voidance of activities. Places, thoughts, or feelings that remind him or her of the event. Uh, difficulty concentrating, unable to hold a job, loss of a job, loss of family due to substance abuse. PTSD symptoms can lead to homelessness. Um, coach suffering, living in one's car, etc. So, so again, not just going to war and then coming back with issues, but then lifelong issues as well. Uh, many do not like to use the word disorder when it comes to post-traumatic stress because many do not believe it's a disorder but more of an injury that was inflicted. Calling it a disorder perpetuates a stigma from getting the help they need. One of the biggest hurdles to getting help for their PTSD is the problem with stigma. They feel there is perceived weakness in admitting to an emotional or physiological issue because of the military culture. Many are not getting the help they need because of this fear of being perceived as weak but hopefully I think this film, this uh, documentary that Nina has uh, uh, created, you know, will, will dispel that. Um, uh, in addition, the stigma goes on in the fear of not being able to get a job if there is a diagnosis of PTSD on the record. So, so again, a lot of issues out there that we're going to be working on, just bringing it up for you. Uh, some spiritual references um, and cause of PTSD. Why would God let bad things happen to good people. You know, in a highly enlightened sense, okay, this is the way basically I look at it, uh, but then again, you know, there's different ways of looking at it. Uh, there's no judgment such as good and bad in the Holy Scripture, Bhag Bhagavada, uh, Bhagavad Gita. When the warrior um, of Juna refuses to fight, because he doesn't want to kill his fellow human beings. Krishna, basically an avatar, avatar of God, appears and tells him to fight, uh, that our life is just an illusion. You cannot kill or be killed. Only God can truly take a life. And when you're in this life as a warrior, you must fulfill a warrior's duty. So, that uh, is to fight and to kill. In Krishna's eyes, death means the attainment of heaven and victory, the enjoyment of earth. So, there will be no pain in fighting and no suffering in surviving. He encourages Arjuna to not see the results of action, but rather focus on the work itself as a man within, within himself, without selfish attachments, alike in victory and defeat. So, but, However, you know, most people don't see war like that, or not as enlightened as uh, this individual here. And in war, the raw violence, destruction, brutality are so overwhelming that often the spirit is distorted or may flee from the body to survive combat. So, and that's what happens actually with traumatic issues as well. You know, as a young child, if you've been you know, sexually abused or any other type of abuse, the spirit literally disconnects and that's what I see. So. So when that happens, this person is trapped into a limbo, again, um, uh, where past and present intermingle without differentiation or continuity. Um, that's because, again, there is no time value in those upper realms. Okay, that purgatory, basically, that we call it. Um, there's no time value, so it keeps going on and on and on. And the sad thing about that is, too, that I'm just picking up, is that fear creates fear. So, you say you have a group of people, and this is the way it happens in in real life as well, guys, and in physical life. You know, when you think of something, you're actually creating frequencies that start to create things in your life, although at limited values until we get stronger and stronger. So, thank God we can't be as strong as we are, otherwise we might have issues. Um, but anyway, um, in the spirit space, again, origination of pure fear, right? Basically, when we get together as a group, it enhances that. It perpetuates that into a much larger issue at that level, especially without a physical body to interfere. So... Uh,
so with that, you know, nothing feels right to that individual until body and spirit again rejoin. Okay. So, so we're going to start the, we're going to start the meta healing. It's going to be about, you know, whatever time we've got, probably about 34 minutes that we're going to do. We might run a little overboard if that's okay with you guys. Uh, so we'll start. Again, you don't have to stand up. If you want to stand up, go ahead and do so, please. Uh, I, I know a lot of people, they want to listen to it. But if you're driving, guys, either pull over or just listen to it some other time. It is on a recording. I know a lot of people get distorted when I work on them, so I just don't want you to have any issues or another traumatic issue for you. All right. So with that, get comfortable. Lie down, sit down, notice your space, and perhaps... Again, just me talking to you has probably put you into a relaxed space, although a lot of uh, emotions, a lot of issues, things like that might be coming up for you, and not just only on this PTSD issue, but then other areas as well, because it is related to trauma, right? Whether it's this lifetime, whether it's through, say, combat, whether it's through a previous lifetime that we've brought over, again, time loops that we've brought over, so... So whatever you're feeling, guys, just note it. And then we'll start by taking a nice, encompassing deep breath in. Just knowing that we're here. And you don't have to go to your happy space if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling disconnected right now. And just be aware of that. Okay? If you're anxious, just be aware of that. A lot of times, again, if you're listening to this, I've already been working on you anyway. So if that anxiety is coming back, if trauma is coming back, anything like that, guys, I'll help you stay centered. Okay, so we can go through it because sometimes it gets overwhelming and then we want to quit. But I'll help you stay centered and then you can look out into that space if you want. Let's go ahead and take another nice deep breath in. This time, accessing group power, accessing our group space um, to bring in, you know, just like group healing, group prayer, group intention, it has force. There's there's power in numbers. So coming into that force where we can effortlessly come out of where we are and into that light that we were or perhaps even a stronger light that we are. So Exhaling, if you haven't done so already, again, noticing the other members in your space. And these other members, um, I actually see a lot of, um, again, uh, individuals who have passed away from trauma coming into the space as well. So it's not just the physical people here. Uh, I, see, I see that you guys have brought in a lot of, say, deceased individuals uh, as well. So which is fantastic. You know, I welcome anybody, any spirit. So I'll just take a moment to realize them. Breathing in nice and deep. Again, asking ourselves how to connect to pure source even stronger. And if you don't know what that means, guys, no worries. Just another term that I use for God. God, again, being so distorted that I use pure source. So again, if you have a definition for God, guys, let's just revert back to pure source. Again, not that your definition is distorted or anything like that, but then again, there's a lot of association with your definitions. Okay. Um, and that's the only reason. So nothing against your definition, but then just coming back to say a neutral space. So just using pure source. Okay. Um, and you can just use it for this this event if you'd like. You can always revert back, right? Exhaling if you haven't done so already. I'm sure many of you have. Uh, but just noting your breath, coming into the space, realizing that it is okay for you to relax. You know, it is okay for you to take the time to come into this space 
the important thing about any trauma is that we get disconnected from time. That's basically how your spirit saves you or protects you. So, again, acknowledging or the best way to connect with spirit again is to note your body. And perhaps even now, you might have noticed that your toes, especially the big one, might feel a little different. You might have uh, never been aware of your big toe, but go ahead, pay attention to the big toes. Let's expand that feeling, that warmth, that relaxation that's coming through into that big toe, into the other toes, just noticing bottom of your feet, you know, the balls of the feet, the arches, the heels. And again, if you're new to me, okay, again, no worries. It still works on you if you don't believe anything I do. It's even more fantastic, guys. It still works on you. Um, you don't have to believe. You can believe if you like. It doesn't matter. But as you get more and more comfortable knowing um, the bottoms of your feet, the tops of your feet, the ankles, your calves, your shins, just noticing that area. Basically, the way the process works is I get you into a deep meditative state. Okay. Totally connected with your body. And then on the spirit side or admin level, I work at spirit level to just reconnect that spirit into your body even more and then basically reawaken it. And we'll get into that as we go on. So so while you're noticing, focusing your body, and for many of you on the call, perhaps the first time you've got that intimate with your body, um, I'll be working on the spirit side, connecting you and removing that distortion that causes traumatic events, PTSD, or other um, uh, acronyms that we could call it. So, so with that, again, you may have noticed your legs getting a little more heavier. And we can even go higher up into the thighs, inner thighs, outer thighs, all the way around. Just noticing that leg space. Again, from the bottoms of the feet all the way up. Very nice. If you're wondering what to think about, think about your body. Think about that leg space. Okay, if you have emotions coming up for you, no worries. Just notice and then go back to your physical body. And since there are spirits involved, not only physical spaces, guys, um, obviously they don't have bodies. However, because I am just connecting you to pure source, okay? No matter where you are, what level you're at, guys, that's the main key, uh, connecting you to your body for the physical individuals. Again, a way to connect for the spiritual individuals and for your spirit as well, just being in that light of pure source without any distortion is enough, so... Just there were some people wondering about that, so um, go ahead and take a nice deep breath in as we extend and go deeper. Just because we can, we're strong enough, we're confident enough, we're brave enough to go into some of those realities um, that might have um, scared us, caused trauma, right? We don't have to revisit them, guys, but let's just be aware of them. Let's just be aware of what happened, okay? Uh, as we release, if you haven't done so already, perhaps acknowledging more of our body, like the groin area, the hips, the butt area. Okay. 
in, although this is a meditation, you might not be totally relaxed. That's okay, you just note it. Just because those imagine <clears throat> the imagery, the feeling, anything like that might be coming up for you. So As you're feeling what's going on with your body, especially from you know, that belly button on down, just noting that space. Um, if we normally I don't like to set intentions, but some of the intentions that we are going to do for this call is obviously to help you out in many ways for the ones who've been departed, you know, bless their spirits and then help them move on into that higher space, say that heavenly space where they belong. So they get disconnected from that time loop, that distortion, that ongoing pain that they're feeling. Okay. Um, there we go. So we're going to be doing that through the session. Uh, for the survivors, still instilling that frequency to one, stop suicidal thoughts and feelings, stop the depression, um, help stop re-experiencing the trauma and constant flashbacks. Um, there's more, but why not? Let's go deeper as I continue to tell you this, um, these intentions by taking a nice deep breath in. Allowing yourself to feel whatever you're feeling. So that allowing breath in as we exhale. Allowing that exhalation to come into play whatever, whichever way it comes. And ascending higher, right? connecting deeper with that spirit by going into the small of the back, the mid-back, the digestive area, the solar plex area. There you go. I'm just going to hang out here for a little bit. Again, helping you with any digestive issues. If you have back issues and working on that, I can't adjust you just like a chiropractor. Just frequency level, though. So if you're feeling anything different... That's fantastic. Uh, for many who are new to me, again, I don't necessarily have to know any specifics of what's going on with you. Okay. Um, but in a group space, what I do, because I know there's a lot of questions out there on how this works, how can I help you? get rid of your depression and so on. So, Because, again, you come from a fear space. So as you get more comfortable, as you get more connected to a pure spirit of yourself, let me kind of explain what how this goes. And whatever you're feeling in your body, guys, just go with it. Um, in essence, through my near-death experience, uh, at the second near-death experience, I was brought into, say, an enlightenment state by connecting to pure source at a much higher level. So what I do, or what I've been given the abilities to do for you is connect you to your, or the pure source, there's only one, so through a more transparent spirit of yours. So, so that's why I don't necessarily have to know what happens to you, but because your spirit or pure source obviously does, right? So coming in at a higher state, things get resolved. So, very simple. Noticing how you're feeling, noticing what's going on with your body. Any thoughts, traumas, things like that coming up for you guys? Again, notice it. You can always release it. The best thing to handle it if it's overwhelming you, because I know there's some people kind of in that space, 
is to look at that event from a third person perspective. So like in case um like you're watching T V. Okay? And you're seeing events literally on a TV set. So if you can imagine those emotions, those ideas, those concepts that are holding you back. Whatever's coming up for you, let's just throw them on to that TV set. Something outside of you, right? And this will also help remove those frequencies out of your spirit space to stop that distortion and then out into that universal space. Okay. There we go. So let's see if you can help those some of those people that are getting a little over anxious as things start to pop up for you, come out for you. Helping you release attention. Again, guys, this is the safest you'll probably ever be because this is the closest um, you'll be connected to Pure Source or you have been connected to Pure Source at this time. Again, too anxious. Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. A releasing breath in. And it might be tough for some individuals, but why not go deeper? Again, because we are safe, we are secure, right? They're just images. You can always shut them off, turn that channel. But as we exhale, letting go, breath out, sending into the solar plex area, the upper back, the chest area, the heart, lungs and perhaps into the shoulders okay. and for many shoulder space just mentioning the shoulders you might have relaxed even more your arms getting heavier your biceps triceps your elbows your forearms your hands palms fingers fingertips All getting relaxed, probably much heavier as you let go of any muscle tension in your limbs or any other body part that you feel. Again, as confirmation, because I know many of you need confirmation, especially in traumatic situations, that it is okay to be here, to know, to be what you're doing here is okay. To give you confidence that things will change for you. There we go. Your, uh, your fingertips, your toes might start to... Uh, move, I might twitch, I might move, again confirmation from spirit side, your spirit, guided by pure source, again allowing you to get back into say balance, your natural balance that you were created from, okay? And releasing anything that we need to release. Belief systems, ideas, concepts. This lifetime, previous lifetimes.
Again, some of the benefits, obviously, is um, you know breaking the pattern of self-destructive behaviors, breaking the addiction, break the addiction to substance abuse, uh, sleeping more deeply and calmly without the recurring nightmares, uh, and bringing back the will to live. You know, restoring interest and love for life, strengthening relationships with your loved ones. And attracting the help that you need to come into your life in all forms, that 360 degrees of abundance, including, you know, financial opportunities. So with that, we'll continue on. Again, because we're strong enough. And because we can, and because we're guided, right? So let's take that liberating breath in. Nice and deep. And then exhaling. Into setting up from the fingertips of the arms, shoulders, into the throat, the neck area. Noticing whatever is happening to you. Again, a lot of time, you know, we go by certain sections just because one helps me release those emotions, um, belief systems, ideas. Um, not from, not only from the tra trauma, you know, from war or anything else, but then also it aligns your spirit level as well. Um, so it again, releases those experiences. Uh, those memories, and not just, uh, again, at a physical level, but deep down at uh, what I call spiritual DNA. So, uh, there we go. Go ahead and adjust some of those necks as well, neck and shoulder area. Being in your body, being in that space, notice whatever is going on for you. I see a lot of calming coming into uh, this group. Again, when we first started, a lot of anxiousness, a lot of fear, a lot of distortion. Um, coming back, making it okay for your spirit to come back into your body, connect with yourself. Again, this will help you 
greatly heal that moral pain. And again, as no matter what happens, you can never do anything wrong, right, from God's perspective or that pure source perspective. Uh, God loves you no matter what. Again, you didn't do anything wrong. Um, helps dissolve that survivor guilt. So you're just fulfilling that warrior duty, you know, staying present and embrace the beauty and fragility of life instead of questioning the value of your survival. So if you're here, just know that it's for a reason, it's for a purpose. Your life is meaningful because you survived. And that will help bring in the res um, and restore your identity, self-acceptance, self-love. There we go. Very nice. Let's ascend even higher. Now that we're comfortable, now that we're more at peace. Not only with ourselves, uh, with the community, with our spirit. Let's go ahead and take that enlightening breath in. Ascending higher. Again, because we are brave, we're secure in the knowing that we are safe. And then exhaling, sending into the back of the head, the top of the head, the forehead, the eyes, eyebrows. Again, noting all the little details of your face and the best way to connect is to be in your flesh, in your body so much that your spirit starts to awaken. Okay? And disconnects you from those time loops of trauma. So again, noticing the eyes, the eyebrows, eyelashes, around the nose, the nostrils, that little curve on your upper lip, your lips, your chin, your temples, your cheeks. And now that we're more, all more comfortable, I ask confirmation from your spirit side and pure source. You might have noticed that your jaws have relaxed, got a little heavier, right? Again, confirmation from spirit side that it is okay for you you are on that path of connecting back into spirit, your spirit. Very nice. go onward and inward by taking that internal breath in coming complete more internally seeing ourselves as more complete and then exhaling letting go and coming into that left side of the brain
And then on the exhale, going to the right side of the brain. On the exhale, going to that central spot in the brain, I call it the communication center, just enhancing communication again between the two halves of the brain, body and mind, through more dynamic nervous system, and then through pure source more clear, definitive, pure spirit. So, there we go. Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in, starting from the bottom of the feet, working our way up upper body, upper legs, solar plex area of the neck into the head, and beyond, for many of you, you might feel an expansiveness, a lightness, uh, whatever you're feeling, guys, fantastic. Um, just noting your spirit in and around you, again, it's like a nice, secure, warm blanket, keeping you complete, keeping you safe, keeping you guided. There we go. Perhaps feeling a little more restored, <clears throat> feeling that self-acceptance again, feeling that self-love. And understanding that whatever happens in this physical realm that we call life, uh, just understanding that that is just a spiritual experience Right, a method to um, grow spiritually, to acknowledge higher levels, instead of living living as a damaged soul, and also understanding ourselves as a role as a warrior instead of a victim. You know, once a warrior, always a warrior. So the real battle begins when you come home. So be a warrior of life. Right, the beauty of life is to walk into the physical world as a spiritual being. So remember that. I'll let you be for a couple minutes. As I continue to work on you here.
Just noting your breath. Let's see when that light perhaps come into your space. And then feeling lighter perhaps as those spirits who have been wanting help from you again. Help them release into that heavenly space. Where they belong. So, there we go. Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. I just notice our heart area right between the ribs, the solar plex. Just notice a ball of light. And as we let go, if you haven't done so already, have that light, that purity from pure source, that knowledge from pure source, that connection from pure source, just starting to glow and expand. And with each breath, expanding even further and further out, encompassing your body in that light, in that security, in that safety, Bringing back again everything into balance that we need. There we go. And as I continue to work on you, again, if you're new with me, um, a couple of ways I help you. One, is basically I change frequencies, right? Because everything is created a frequency. So one, I uh, change your frequency and then at a blueprint level, at that core level. Um, so basically what happens is you naturally start feeling better. You naturally, um, well, things just change. Okay, like say your addictions just like disappear. So, and that might, you might not believe that but it's happened to a lot of people. So um, there's no cravings, no um, no needs, no nothing like that. It's just no willpower. It just, like, say, disappears for you. So just be aware of that. Um, two, um, I help you change your frequency, and then you get attracted to, say, the help that you need, the... Um, the wherewithal, the people, the places, the things, the remedies, whatever, like just comes into your life, almost like you trip over them, and then those remedies, whatever people, actually start to help you at a truer sense. Okay. So if you get attracted to something that you need to do, although it might seem totally out there, guys, just go with it, because again, your spirit is guiding you now, and maybe that's what you need. Okay. Again, that knowledge comes from a higher space, not your space. So, so just go with it. Um, and then three is you know a mixture of both, obviously. But the important thing again is changing those core frequencies that's been generated through this trauma. So. So with that, let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. Nice and deep and as we end. For those people who can meditate longer, I urge you to do so, just staying in this space. For those of us who can't, again, noting yourself, still staying connected to pure source through more translucent spirit. Exhaling, uh, opening your eyes, Coming into this moment in time, the now moment, again, connected to your spirit, much more centered, much more balanced, much more. There you go.
good. If it is a detox, if you're feeling a little disoriented, a little distraught, um, whatever it is, guys, it's a detox that needs to happen for you if that's your rule set. So just watch it. You'll notice that it'll feel a little different, not a debilitating um, issue, but just something that comes through you and washes away. So again, a cleansing space. Fantastic, guys. While you're still coming into this moment in time, you know where do we go from here? Now what? Right? So if you're suffering from PS, PTSD, or even if you're not, um, it might be helpful to play this on a loop. I know we get a ton of testimonials on people who play this on a loop. Um, uh, in their sleep or in the background while they're working or at home. You necessarily don't have to listen to each word, but just in the background, just in a low tone so you can kind of hear it. Okay, Because those frequencies on a recording, guys, the frequencies that I help you with uh, are good on a recording as well. So play it on a loop. Um, what you can do to make a difference Okay. Again, watch the documentary trailer. Uh, Jane and Johnny coming, come marching home, homeless. Actually, it's on masajati.com forward slash PTSD. It's if you scroll towards the bottom, guys. Fantastic eye-opening issue. Um, I mean, documentary that that really opens up what goes on, you know, and, and brings a reality, a new reality that we don't see. So. Um, the filmmaker, Neil Gilbert, uh, I'm sorry, G Gilberty, dedicated her life to raise the awareness of PTSD to the world. She's been working on this uh, film tirelessly for six years. In January this year, she quit her job in order to be able to focus on perfecting and completing the film. She's been using her life, her own savings, to support the film production and herself. So please support her selfless effort in helping PTSD by making a tax-deductible donation um, for the film production. Okay, If you send us a receipt of your donation, guys, we'll send you one frequency spa session. If you're not familiar with that, we can you can go to masajati.com. Um, please see masajati.com forward slash PTSD, all lowercase for offer details on that. So, um, Other things you can do to help? Um, and this is on masajati.com forward slash PTSD. Again, listen. Do not ask about their experience in war. If they want to talk about something going on in their life. Just listen. Be patient. You know, babysit for a family who may need to go to the VA hospital or, or just a night out. Drive a vet to their appointments, especially if they're disabled or, you know, in a remote area. Volunteer your time to a nonprofit organization helping veterans everywhere. Get involved in the veterans community. Donate money to a worthy cause that helps veterans. Donate your frequent flyer miles. Check your airline. Uh, there are programs in place for that. So, guys, a lot of things uh, that you can do. But once again, guys, um, when you're donating things, when you're helping people, make it their story, not yours. And what I mean by that is that um, um, don't do it because it's Christmas time, and don't and you want to be nice to people. You know, just do it because it's another spirit involved. And then that way, what happens is like we get rid of the issues that actually um, we get rid of those war issues, things like that, completely, rather than creating more because we want to feel good inside. Okay. So with that, guys, thank you for being on the call. Again, if you have any questions, customers, customer with an S at masajati.com. Uh, with any of your questions, and this is a free gift, uh, you can print out a gift card and give it to somebody. Probably one of the best Christmas presents you could ever give to somebody who's suffering from PTSD. Guys, with that, thanks for being on the call. Take care, and I hope to see you on some other venue. Bye-bye.